was Drury. We uh, left it late, to put it mildly, before Troy Paris uh, turned up to give Ireland a victory. Was it a deserved victory? I think you have to say it was. Um, didn't, it wasn't a vintage performance uh, from Ireland, yet um, we did have the ball in the back of the net on four occasions, and there was a couple of other um, really good moves that ended up in the keeper having to pull off some, I'd say, world-class saves, some very, very good saves. Um, but I have to also give credit to, to Lithuania. They were they were fairly formidable tonight. You know, they stuck to their task. They made it. They frustrated us. They played to their strengths and and at, a, at an individual level defended very very well. You know, um, kept making the point in commentary that um, it was by no fluke that we were struggling to kind of get on the end of crosses because effectively what we what we saw was um, individually to a man Lithuania. You know, were a little bit hungrier kind of go and win headers to clear things to get blocks on shots and maybe we were lacking a little bit um, lacking a little bit of conviction to get on the end of things um, ultimately that's why we did that's why we didn't really um, why we didn't really score however um, I don't know whether there's something in the in the in the air now or, or well, there is that because we'll get into more on the tactics and players who impressed and who missed out on opportunities like for anyone who left early jeez they missed out in the moment I felt Ogbené's goal on Saturday against Belgium was the loudest cheer since Shane Long against Germany but the reaction when Ireland scored with Troy Parrott yeah. in the 96th minute like it's a friendly against Lithuania you should be winning these games but the crowd are literally singing Stephen Kenny's name at the end of the match it's it's incredible how they've got behind this team over the past year, the yeah, Irish supporters. It is, and it's, do you know what? It's 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 um, it's probably nice, uh, you know, uh, to just maybe take a step back and then just enjoy it because it, it, it's there have been times where we've come here, we've watched games, we've we've and we haven't been convinced, Nathan. You know, we've looked at how we're trying to play and. It's been very unconvincing. It's um, it's been difficult to watch, but now it, it, you just feel like you're part. Of, you, you you feel like you're part of it. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's what that's what that's what everybody wants. There, there has to be a there, there 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 has to be a connection between the team, the manager, the supporters. But that 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 roar at the end was like when the Champions League final or something it was crazy. Ireland had four goals disallowed for offside, so I don't know if you can call them chances really, considering they were offside and then from 89 minutes on they had four more chances and scored from one of them probably their four best chances of the game was it the introduction of the substitutes that, that suddenly made Ireland better in those closing stages you'd like to think it is yeah I mean um, you're kind of making the, the point in, in, in commentary that when you work a team enough for you know the first 60 65 minutes you should start to see, you know, um, um, errors creeping in. If you've worked them hard enough, I don't think we really did that in the first half. But there was certainly on occasion we did. So at 60, 65 minutes, Stephen's looking at it going, we haven't really, we haven't really asked enough questions of these. Time to make a few changes, um, and certainly the the, 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 the changes um, certainly injected a little bit of energy into the game. And then when Parry came on, I think he's had, has he had three strikes on goal? One, mm. two from distance, one which was goal. But the other one, need we forget, was a little knockdown um, at the back post, which he's had to do very well to kind of get any kind of a strike on. And the keepers pulled off a world-class save, man. We thought that was the goal. That was the one Troy Part was going to get, and that was going to be the the winner. But the keepers uh, literally just plucked it out of the top corner. Um, Jeez, it was a special finish for the winner. It was. It certainly was. And, and even commentary was uh, sort of reminiscent of Stephen Gerrard in the cup final. The yeah. pace he had to hit it at from that distance. Yeah, and it was. It, it's it's a difficult thing for him to do because it wasn't a straightforward. Once the deliveries come in from Hurahan, Lithuania have done what they've done all night. They've cleared it with a header and it's come out to him. He's 25 yards out, but he's taking it on the torn. It's not. He's not coming straight at it. He's got. He's kind of taking it on the side torn. He's kind of. He's had to kind of get it away from him out of his feet, and he's had to sort of generate enough power to get a strike on it. But what a strike! And the power he's he's, he's generated on that because he's hit it low, Nathan keeper can't get down to save and he's he's, he's uh, it's come through a body of players yeah. but fully deserved I'm delighted for him because he, he's a young player and and it, it's a it's a wonderful feeling for a young player to have something like that happen that can be career changing for somebody you know well, hopefully just give him it, it the confidence he needs for, for Troy Parrott uh, when you're here and you're caught up in the moment and the buzz of afterwards you can sort of forget about when what went before and people watching at home will have looked at that Irish performance and thought like this is Lithuania. They beat San Marino on Friday night, their second win in over a year. How could Ireland not break them down for 95 minutes? 
what went wrong for the first 95 minutes that Ireland couldn't I, score? I think my takeaway before the winner came, I, 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 I was fairly set on it. I think that, the, 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 that's that um, from the changes that Stevens made, I think two or three maybe um, will come away with um, um, you know a little tick beside their performance, saying, "Yeah, I can, I can, I can kind of use them." Uh, I think uh, Collins has done well. Manning has done okay as well. Um, I'm just trying to think. You know, Brown is, is is definitely part of the is, is, is part of the of, of the setup. No doubt about it. I think the question marks will probably still remain over Hurahan. Um, he had a real opportunity tonight to kind of maybe. Just setting themselves into that in, into that role and to be and to be a real option for Stephen and I don't think I, I think there's just too many doubts over his his discipline and his use of the ball sometimes as well. Like, well you know, what's he been asked to do? And and with Alan Brown because like, Ireland must have had a dozen corner kicks. They also must have had another dozen crosses, if not two dozen crosses, and none of them really created anything. And it felt as though the midfielders' jobs was just to give the ball to Manning and Doherty and let them whip it in. That you need more from your your midfielders are do we need more from them or should it have actually been Robinson and Ogbene who were offering more in terms of creativity yeah well probably in that first half we we, we, we got maybe we were getting a little bit of joy in the first 15-20 minutes by getting Manning away down that left hand side and then we moved away from it completely and tried to start playing sort of little intricate five ten yard passes into these central areas where all the Lithuania bodies were yellow jerseys everywhere they're starting they started to read everything then and you're you're giving away possession you're getting frustrated it's at on that occasion where you need maybe somebody and primarily more times than most it should be your midfielder saying not working let's get out move it out and let's get ourselves gone down gone down that left and right hand side again but didn't really happen so was Josh Cullen in a way the big winner from tonight by not being a part of it I wouldn't put it like that. I think that Josh Cullen is, for me, his first name on the, on the team sheet. Right. Simple as that. Regardless of what would have happened tonight, um, I th- I've, I've been at that opinion probably for the last, for the last nine months now. Um, I think he's he's um, he's excellent, and he's I think he's key to that to that to that um, Ireland um, formation, and especially the way Stephen wants to play with that kind of arc of a back five. You need to have that, that well, guy in the middle. Well, on that then, because discipline. one of the arguments is that it's Lithuania at home. You don't need three centre halves. Do we need to not look at it in that way? Like, was Stephen Kenny playing with three centre halves tonight for this He's match? Not going to that or night. because he wanted Darrow O'Shea and Nathan Collins to play in that system? Yeah, he wants to get players. But if Ireland are playing, th- if Ireland are drawn against San Marino in the World Cup qualifiers, if they're at home against Armenia in the Nations League, should they be playing with three at the back? I, I, I think. I think it's important that we settle into a way of playing football. So these players know that when they get on the plane over to Dublin, when they get on that train of field, we're playing this way. You know? And I think he's right to do that. I don't think we're good enough to alter and change. And I don't mean that to be critical of the players. I, I mean, for us to be at our best, we need to be set on a style of play. And I think that formation not only allows us to be defensively strong, but it allows us to go and play. Yeah. It allows us to go and play, and that's the key thing. That's a key part of this of this of this um of this Stephen Kenny era. You know, he wants us to play attractive football, he wants the crowd to be able to see that. And that's what's happening at the moment, so no need for change. And in terms of missed opportunities, like Will Keane is the obvious one. It's very harsh on a player who's making his first start for his country, but but right from the off, the touch wasn't there. Whether it was nerves or just the occasion or just the level that he was suddenly having to play at, it it, it never happened. And you wonder will he get that chance again? Yeah, look, probably a little bit guilty of probably tr- trying a little bit too hard, you know, and always kind of thinking maybe two touches ahead or two moves ahead. And what you can see, maybe the ball getting a little bit caught up under his feet on occasion. I think. Um, when you look at the way Callum Robinson plays, he moves an awful lot. He drifts out left, out right. He drifts centrally. He drifts deep. You have to be able to, you know, to, to move based on where he's going as well. And he might have struggled a little bit with that as well. Um, so certainly, no, not 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 his best night. Well, that yell out at the end, anyways. You enjoyed that last goal, Stewie. That was a good way. I needed, I needed to roar. Something to the I enjoyed that. Minute. Stewie, great stuff as always. Thanks, Nathan.